So for writing proportions, under how to write, to write a proportion, you set one ratio equal to another ratio. I always think of this as an equal sign in the middle, and there's going to be two fractions next to it on either side. That's always the form of a proportion. What looks like a fraction or a ratio equal to another ratio. And I apologize, my dot camera is really blurry today. More than normal, I feel like. Okay, so in our next space, we're going to do a little practice on this. Melissa can buy four comic books for $48. What are the two things being compared here? We have comic books and we have money. So we've got four books and $48. This is from the first sentence. Notice I haven't even read the second sentence yet. I'm just looking at what are the two things being compared? Comic books and money. And then I'm filling in the numbers with what I know from that first sentence. The question then says, write a proportion that gives the cost Y of buying six comic books. So we don't know how many dollars here, that's why that's our variable. But we do know from the problem that we're trying to find out how much money it'll cost for six. It's really important that the left side and the right side are set up so that books are over dollars on both or You could have had dollars over books or both proportions. Like, look at this one. This is not the way I normally think of doing them, but it also works. I have four books is equal to $48. Six books is equal to the Y. So in this set of the proportion, they've done a, a book dollar in each ratio. In this one, they're saying we've got a ratio for books and a ratio for dollars. Talk at your table based on what we did last week. How would you solve this? my equation be to solve this problem? What it, what's across from each other? 48 and 6. 48 times 6 is equal to 4 times y. I set that up that way from this problem up here, but look down here. What's across from each other down here? I still have 48 and 6, and I still have 4 and y. Now, maybe others can do 48 times 6 in their head, but I cannot. I get 288 is equal to 4y. I divide by 4. And we get 72. This is a word problem. And what does the 72 go with? Dollars. So we're going to put a dollar sign in front of that. And that would be our answer. Please notice that there's words in all of these ratios. Do you see them? This is one example of how to set it up. You spend 100 minutes in two classes. 100 minutes, two classes. Write a proportion that gives the number of minutes you spend in three classes, assuming all the classes are the same length, right? Not the case on our Smart Wednesdays, true? 
I don't write it this way typically. I think that this is a lot. Here's my shortcut way of writing it. I would just put minutes, class, and then I would do 100 over 2 is equal to m over 3. I think that this is a lot more writing to get to the same ratio. Do you see what I did? I just pulled the words to the front. And that way I'm making sure that what ends up on the top and the bottom are in the right places. We're not even going to solve this. We're just going to move on and look at how to set up the next. A school requires two teachers for every 15 students. Wow, that would mean there would be four teachers in this room right now. That seems like a lot, doesn't it? Maybe they're, maybe they're really little kids. Write a proportion that gives the number of T of teachers needed for 105 students. Again, here's my shortcut way. I would make T over S. I don't even need to write out teachers and students. I know what they stand for. And what do you think my first ratio would look like? 2 over 15 is equal to T, we don't know this, over 105. Try setting up that last one by yourself and we will check and see if it looks like mine in just a moment. Again, the answer is here, but we're trying to do it without having to write the words in every single ratio, right? Try to take this last one and write it my style, which is kind of a shortcut. Mm-hmm. 